Carrie, um, before I get you to read, I was wondering if you could share um, with any aspiring writer out there, what, what piece of advice could, could you give them? Don't peak too soon. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to be a writer, like since I was a school child and I wrote in school. There's so many opportunities as students, um, you know, in high school and college university to write. Um, and so I, I took all those opportunities and then I got out into the real world and found that it was a little bit harder. <laughs> and um, I took a master's program at U of T when I was 25 and it was a master's of creative writing. And mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a good experience, um, but the thesis I wrote was a novel and it was not good. And <laughs> yeah, it was not good at all. And it took me 10 more years to publish a book. And I would have been really devastated to think that, you know, this, this master's thesis is a failure. It'll take me another decade to publish my first novel. Um, but I'm so glad. I really love my first novel. My master's thesis was not good. If I had, you know, everyone kept saying, don't give up. But I think I knew. Um, and if I hadn't given up, I would, I would if I'd succeeded in publishing it, I, I'm, I would have had a book I was a bit regretful about. So um, I'm not sorry that I had to wait 10 more years and publish my first novel when I was 37. Um, I'm, I'm glad now it all worked out the way it was supposed to. Ah, oh, that's great advice. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And um, so everyone sit back and get comfortable again. Carrie's going to read an excerpt um, from, oh, I'll just hold it up again, waiting for start of fall, which by the way, Carrie, I have been singing that song in my head now, like for weeks. So, so thank you very much. I've got a little boy meets girl going on. It's such a good song. Do you know they also wrote um, How Will I Know by Whitney Houston? And I Want to Dance with Somebody. I didn't know that. They're like a pop hit machine. So yeah, I absolutely love their book and th or their song and thank them in the comments because it's such yes. a good title and yeah, it's a bit catchy too. And it's it's perfect for the, for the, yeah. the book as well. So um, if you could just share with us why you've chosen to re read this particular pa passage, that would be great. So I'm going to read the opening of the novel because I feel like uh, another bit of advice for writers is, is plot. I discovered plot and everything came alive for me. I hadn't known about it before. What a trick. Um, and so this book, I think, is a little bit propulsive. And if I jumped in the middle, it might be harder to figure out where we're at. So I want to start at the very beginning as the wheels begin turning. Okay. And I also love the first line. <laughs> she hadn't been drinking. This was the thing. Yet that morning, Brooke woke up with a hangover and it took about five seconds to put the night back together again. She had a different taste in her mouth, but the weight on her head was just the same. So what had happened? What had led to the restless, uneasy sleep that she was now shaking off like a blanket, eyes struggling to come to terms with the daylight? And then there it was, reality settling over her like dread. And it was all coming back. The press conference, watching the live stream as her phone buzzed, a bombshell that ricocheted and the whole thing unfolding with no warning of what might happen next, except Brooke had some guesses. A level of insight into the general narrative that didn't serve to make her feel better or wiser. It made her feel worse. And she'd broken out in a sweat, even though her extremities were freezing and her legs were shaking the way they'd been shaking the second time, which was really the first time that Derek Murdoch kissed her. It was uncharacteristic. That's what they all said, the pundits and the people online who were paid to talk even when they didn't know what they were talking about. They explained how Derek wasn't a person who ran away from challenges, no matter how difficult. Principal, that's what they kept calling him, the key to his character, they supposed. They'd never seen him like this, so rattled, and Brooke would admit, as she'd watched him falling apart on the screen, that she hadn't recognized him either. Could the breakdown be part of a performance? Was this the strategy they had in mind? Maybe it was supposed to be humanizing because she couldn't think of any other reason for Derek to have fared so poorly, professionally at least. He'd never been unprepared 
for anything in his life. Thank you so much, Carrie. That was fantastic. So that is just a little taste of waiting for a star to fall. Thank you for being a guest on this week's episode of All About Books. I'm thrilled to have met you and to learn more about, about your book. Um, what I'll do for the viewers out there, I'll put links down below in the description box so you can find um, links to Carrie's website and also where you can purchase a copy of her book. Be sure to come next back next week. Hopefully I'll be able to talk then. <laughs> And uh, I'll have another author and another behind the book story. Thank you for watching.